Variation in quality. A sign of quality is low variation in the dimensions of key manufactured components for a product. For example, a study looked at 25 shells that were designed for a bookcase sold at the retail chain Walmart. This bookcase needed to be put together by the customer. They found that the variance for the shelf lengths was 9.23 millimeters squared. The shells were supposed to be 670 millimeters long in order to fit into the case properly. It says another 27 shells produced by Bassett Furniture were examined and it was found that the variance for those shell lengths was 0.25 millimeters squared. At the 5% significance level, test the claim that the shells sold at Walmart are manufactured with, with more variation than the shells produced by Bassett. Okay, so what we have here is a bunch of information, but basically what they're saying is that we want to test a hypothesis, right? At the 5% significance level, test the claim. So it's a hypothesis test, and they talk about variation there in that statement. So it's a hypothesis test to compare two population variances. And what we're comparing is furniture produced by Bassett and furniture produced for Walmart, right? So we want to see which one has less manufacturing. What they're saying up above is that a sign of quality is low variation, right? And that's kind of important because, you know, if, if the shells are supposed to be 670 millimeters long in order to fit into the case properly, if it turns out that they're a little too long, they won't fit. So everyone has this experience perhaps of picking up some furniture at a cheap store like Walmart or Target and finding that it doesn't quite go together like it's supposed to because perhaps the shelf is a little too long or a little too short so things don't quite fit together and it's either rickety or it's just difficult to make everything fit nicely. Nicely. Um, well, better furniture really doesn't have those issues as much. And the reason why is because they pay really careful attention to how it's manufactured, whereas in the other case, it's a cheaper manufacturing process. All right, well, anyways, let's look at this problem and try to figure out if there really is a significant difference. There certainly seems to be, at least based on the numbers. The other thing I want to point out here is that this is a variance that they've given us in the problem. They haven't given us a standard deviation. They've given us a variance, right? So both of these are variances. All right, so let's go ahead and do it. We'll start out with the first step, which is to express the claim symbolically. And the claim here is expressed here that the shells sold at Walmart are manufactured with more variation. So we could say this essentially, that the variance for Walmart is greater than the variance for Bassett Furniture. So I'll use W and B as my subscript there. All right, let's get the HO then and the HA. Looking at the claim, I see a greater than symbol, and that indicates that it's the same as HA. Remember, if we have greater than, less than, or not equal to, the claim and HA are the same. Okay, from here, we want to express the um, null hypothesis, which has to express, in this case, the opposite idea, which would be less than or equal to. So it would be saying the variance for the Walmart shelves is less than or equal to the variance for Bassett. Okay, very good. So that's our claim, HO and HA. Now we'll list the data. To do the data, we're going to have Walmart and Bassett listed. So let's get the information from Walmart. It says a study looked at 25 shelves that were designed for a bookcase sold at the retail chain Walmart. So that's N is equal to 25. This bookcase needed to be put together by the customer. They found that the variance for the shelf length was 9.23. So this is the variance, so we're going to use S squared, right, for Walmart, and we're going to say that that's 9.23 millimeters squared is the unit, but we don't need to worry about that here. And it goes on to say another 27 shells produced by Bassett Furniture, so N is 27 for the Bassett shells, were examined, and it was found that the variance for those shelf lengths was, so again, S squared for Bassett is 0 0.25. Five. And again, millimeter squared is the unit, but we don't need to worry about that here at the moment. And then we have alpha is equal to 5%. Okay, so let's take that information and form our test statistic from it. Our test stat is an F test statistic, so we'll use the variable F here. And remember, we're going to form a ratio of these sample variances, right? So we're going to have S squared over S squared. The one that should go on top is the larger one, so we're going to put the Walmart one on top. So let's go ahead and use S squared W over S squared B for Bassett. Okay, then we're going to put that on top, and we don't have to square them here because they're already squared. So notice we've been given the sample variance, so we just plug it in directly as it is. So 9.23 over 0.25. Let's see what that gives us then. 
Okay, so we have 9.23 divided by 0.25. We have a huge number, 36.92. 36.92. Okay, so that's quite a large test statistic. It's probably going to fall in the rejection region, but to be sure, we should form our critical value, or get for sorry, form our drawing that extrudes the critical region, and then find the critical value which shows where that critical region begins. So an F test has this kind of shape curve, right? We'll draw a tail area on the right hand side and shade it. This will be our rejection region. Let's go ahead and start here with so we have zero here in the bottom, and then we're going to be looking at the um, critical value here. Let's describe the critical value's properties. So first of all, it's a one tail test, a right tail test, correct? And that right tail test will have alpha of 5%, so 0 0.05. Okay, from there, we're gonna use the degrees of freedom for the numerator. Now the numerator variable was the Walmart variable, so we'll have 25 minus one, which is 24. And then we're going to have the Bassett number, which is the denominator's degrees of freedom. It'll be 27 minus one, or in other words, 26. Let's go to our F table, the 0.05 table for the F distribution, and let's look up 24 degrees of freedom and 26 degrees of freedom and find our critical value. Okay, so now we're looking at the 0.05 table, and we're trying to find degrees of freedom 24 in the numerator and 26 in the denominator. That's not on this first page of our table, so I'm going to go ahead and remove this one and go for the second page. On the second page, you see that we have numerator degrees of freedom 24 here, and denominator degrees of freedom 26 is actually way down here at uh, 1.95, 1.95. Okay, so our critical value turned out to be 1.9464. That's 1.9464. Okay, so that, that critical value, Obviously, when we compare our test stat to that, the test stat's going to be in the rejection region, right? This is way over here in the rejection region. It's actually off the charts in the rejection region. So we're going to clearly say that we should reject HO and therefore support HA. All right, with that being our conclusion, we want to look back at the claim and identify whether it's HO or HA, and we can see that it's the same as HA, so we're going to be using this terminology. So the sample data support the claim, right? The sample data support the claim. Okay, and of course the claim here is that the Walmart furniture has a greater variation for the shelf length than the Bassett furniture.